In this video, we're going to take a look at some common string methods, among them length, index of, car at, to uppercase, to a lowercase, and replace. So I'm going to continue with the example I've been building in several videos. And first of all, we have our Ohio as a swing state. We're going to leave that where it is. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say um, Ohio dot index of and let's put in a we can put in either a character or a string let's put in the string when index of is going to return a variable uh, an integer variable that tells us where it found this word when within the subject string which in this case is Ohio okay one important thing is that it's going to return a number and right now we're not storing that number anywhere. This is a common mistake I see in introductory programming where somebody will call a method that returns a variable and not actually store it anywhere. The yellow line here is our friend. It's telling us that, you know what, you probably want to do something with that, don't you? So I'm going to hold Alt, press Enter, assign variable to new value, and I'm going to say, uh, just click on it and say yes. And I'm going to call this variable index of when and then I'm going to say a new system out print line. And I'm going to say when is found. And then we'll say plus index of when. Okay, and save and run. This should return to us 11, and no surprise it does return 11. If I say is, what's it going to return? Let's see. We run. And it should return, I'm going to say probably what, 5, 6, uh, yeah, 5. So 0 for O, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 5. Okay, uh, what if I say I? Oh, and by the way, it might be easier to visualize when we see this map I put together earlier. Do you see how is starts at location 5? Because in Java, we start counting characters at 0, and so is is location 5, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's actually the sixth number, but counting with 0, that makes it 5. Okay, what if I say I? What do you think? Well, let's take a look. 0 for the O, 1 for the H, 2 for the I. Should be 2, shouldn't it? Let's take a look. And I run. Sure enough, it's 2. Now, what if I put something that simply doesn't exist, like the letter X? What are we going to get then? In Java, we will get minus 1. So if you get a minus 1, and I guess I shouldn't say when anymore. It will say X is found. X is found. Uh, if you get a minus 1, that means that this doesn't exist in the string. That's a good way if you're parsing through data and you want to confirm something is not there. Do an index of, and then if you get back minus 1, it means the data you're looking for is not there. Okay, so that's index of. Now, okay, here's an interesting one. What if I want the second I, not the first I? Okay, well, we know that the first I is found at location, uh, whoops, we know the first I is found at location two, correct? So I'm going to go ahead and run. What's nice is, remember we had a video we talked about uh, overloading. And overloading is the ability to take a method or a constructor and give it different behavior if it has a different signature. Different signature, a method signature, let's remember what a method signature is, access modifier, its name, its return type, and parameter variables. As luck would have it, this index of method is overloaded. Okay, so that means there's a different signature that we can call for exactly this circumstance. When we don't want the first I, we want the second I. So I'm going to say I, comma, and the overloaded version says, well, where do you want me to start counting? Okay, let's tell it to start counting at position three. What's position three? Well, let's see. Ohio, that's going to take us to the O in Ohio. So it's going to start counting there and look for the next I, which is going to be location five. So let's save, and let's run this one more time. Sure enough, it's five. Okay, so we've identified the first I, the second I. Now what if we want the I and when? Well, let's start it at location six. Save, and run, and you see I is found at 12. 
So you see when we provide two parameters and the second parameter is a number, it says let's look for the letter i, but let's look for the letter i starting at this location in the original string where the original string is this variable called Ohio. Hopefully when you start to see this, you can start to visualize how we're going to be able to parse out a string like this where we have the same delimiter character in different positions and more importantly, different variable positions. Uh, positions that, so uh, what I'm trying to say is the same character but in different places and those different places vary. It's not always position 10, position 20. It varies based on the amount of data that it's delimiting. Okay, so that's index of. This one's going to be very pow powerful for us. Remember, index of takes a string or a character, returns a number. Very important. Takes string or character, returns a number. Let's go the other way. There's another one called car at. So I'm going to say Ohio.car at. You see this one? This one returns a character, not a string, but a character. And what this does is it says, what is the character at this position? So, I don't know, let's pick uh, maybe, uh, I'll just pick one at random, how about 16? Now remember, that's going to return a character this time. So, care at takes a number, returns a character. Index of takes a character or string, returns a number. It's easy to get those confused. If you see that on the quiz, make sure you understand which is which. Alt-Enter, assign to new variable, and we're going to say car at 16. Okay, sorry, car at 16. Okay, and let's system out print line. The character at 16 is, and then we're going to say car at 16. Okay, whoops. And let's save and let's go ahead and run. The character at 16 is S. Let's confirm that with my Excel spreadsheet. Sure enough, it's the S in state. Okay, a few more string methods we want to take a look at then. Let's do Ohio.length. Length tells us the total number of characters in the string. So I'll say Alt-Enter again, assign return value to new variable, and we'll say Ohio, whoops, Ohio length equals Ohio.length. And now once again, system out print line, the length of the string is and then we'll say plus Ohio length, just like so, and save. A lot of times we'll use this to validate data. We might say if a string length is zero, then we'll say it's empty. Uh, oh, but what about one thing? What if I had some spaces? Do those count? What if I put spaces uh, right at the end? Do those count? Remember right now, before putting the spaces, the length of the string is 21. Let me run it again with spaces and see what we get. Ooh, sure enough, it's 25. So what if the string were like, whoops, just a minute, my mouse is a bit touchy right now. What if the string looked like this? Is that empty? Well, not really. So we have an option where we can trim a string. So I'm going to say ohio.trim.length and what that does is that takes off any beginning or ending white space on a string. So we'll go over here, Alt Enter, assign to new variable, and we'll say trimmed length equals Ohio.trim.length. So now we'll say system out print line, the trimmed length of the string is, and then plus, and then trimmed length. Okay, and save, and let's run one more time. Now, take a look at these last two lines. Do you see the difference there? The length untrimmed is 25 because we have four characters. The trimmed length is 21. So you see that trim is really nice because uh, it, can, it can exclude white space only on the edges, though. It won't take out any white space in between. It only takes out white space that it, that's at the beginning or the end of the string. Okay, a couple more things that we can do. Uh, let's say string Minnesota equals blank blank. Okay, or let's say, let's put a few blanks like this. Okay, now I'm going to say uh, Minnesota dot length and alt enter again 
to assign to a new variable, and we're going to say mn length equals Minnesota.length. Okay. Um, I'm also going to do one more. I'm going to so, say Minnesota is empty. Is empty nice be, is nice because that returns a true or a false to tell us if the string is empty. But here again, is that an empty string? Think about that. Is that an empty string? Okay. Uh, let's see. So alt enter, assign to new variable, and we'll say mn empty. Okay. And now we'll say system out print line, and we'll say um, Minnesota length. And we'll say plus mn length plus uh, empty question mark plus mn empty. Let's see what happens here. So we save and we play. Okay, Minnesota length is three because it has three spaces. Is it empty? False. It's not empty. Spaces are not empty. Spaces are characters. But what if we did this? What if I copy all this, and then I add that trim method, and we'll do it in both places. Remember what trim's going to do, so we'll call it mn, mn trim length and mn trim empty, and update the system out print line statement. Now let's see what happens when we trim the string and then we get its length. We get a length of zero and empty is true. So trim and is empty, these are really nice if you're validating data that a user has input uh, to make sure that they have valid data. They didn't just put spaces in, they actually have something that's legitimate data. We use that one quite frequently, especially as kind of like a pre-check before we do some kind of math on a string or any kind of operations on a string. Okay, a couple more we want to do. Uh, first of all, let's say Ohio.replace. Now take a look at this one. So uh, replace means look for one thing and replace it with another. What's another swing state? Florida, right? So Ohio.replace and I'm going to say Ohio. Uh, I'm sorry, we'll start with the string. Uh, yeah, Ohio is fine. And then we'll say Florida. So Florida is another state where the presidential candidates tend to spend a lot of time. Now remember, this is not going to change the string called Ohio. It's going to return a new string. So Alt-Enter, assign to new variable. We'll call it Florida. And then after this string is over, we'll say system out print line. Whoops, sorry, my, that's funny. My fingers were off by one character and it spelled spit. Okay, Ohio. So I want to validate that the variable Ohio did not change. System out print line Florida plus Florida. I want to validate that we have a new string called Florida now. So let's save and let's run one more time. You see, Ohio is a swing state. Doing this operation, this replace operation, did not change. Ohio is a swing state. Uh, but now you see Florida. Look at that. Florida is a swing state. It simply took the word Ohio out of the string called Ohio, and it replaced it with the string Florida. Uh, one word of caution. I apologize for using this word Ohio twice here. Notice that Ohio without quotes is the variable. Ohio with quotes is a string literal called Ohio. These are two different things. So I didn't mean for that to be confusing, but you notice that Ohio here is black. The text is black, just like it is here. You'll also notice when I'm selected on Ohio that all of the Ohio variables are highlighted in yellow. Uh, so what, what I'm doing here is I'm saying, look through this string called Ohio. It could be called foo for all we care. Look for the word Ohio. Remove that word. In its place, put the word Florida, and take a look at what we got below. We still have the original string intact, and now we also have a new string called Florida is a swing state. Okay, a couple more. Uh, let's scream. So I'm going to say Florida dot two uppercase. Okay, and I'm going to say Ohio dot two uppercase. Uh, well, let's say two lowercase. Yeah. What that will do is that will make the string lowercase. But once again, remember, strings are immutable. 
that means we are not changing the original string. So if I were to run it like this, we'll see that it is going to print out the same strings for Ohio and Florida before and after I do the two uppercase and two lowercase operation. This can be frustrating sometimes because you think that you're actually uppercasing the string called Florida and you're actually lowercasing the string called Ohio, but you're not. You're creating a brand new string in memory and as of right now, we have not assigned that place in memory to a variable. So what we end up getting is the exact same line or same set of lines twice without any modification. If we want to see what it looks like uppercased, let's do Alt Enter and let's say Upper Florida. And then again on Ohio, Alt Enter. And we'll say Lower Ohio. Okay, and now let's print out, instead of just Ohio, because that string still exists, Lower Ohio and Upper Florida. Okay, so be careful with that. With a lot of these methods that you see, to see the results that you want, you actually have to assign it to a new variable, because we're not changing the original string. We're simply creating a new string when we do uppercase, and we have to, to make that usable, we have to assign that to a new variable. So Upper Florida, take a look. It's screaming, Florida is a swing state. Uh, lower Ohio is saying very softly, uh, Ohio is a swing state. Notice the O in Ohio has been lowercased. The entire string is lowercase. While for Florida, the entire string is uppercased. But again, these are two different variables. Upper Florida is the modified version. The variable Florida, which we declare here, uh, that still exists. That hasn't changed. If I really want, I can print it all over again and verify it hasn't changed. Okay, save. And one last time, let's run. Okay, so you see Florida is a swing state screaming here when we say upper Florida, but then lower Florida, I'm sorry, not lower Florida, but the original Florida still exists. So what have we learned? Strings are immutable. They can't be changed. If we do something like two upper or two lower, we're not changing that original string. We're simply going to get a new string back, and to make any use for that string, we have to assign it to a variable. The original string is unmodified. Index of, uh, very important. That one's going to take a character and return a number. Care at is going to take a number and return a character. So those two things kind of walk in, uh, uh, work in reverse. Length gives us the length of a string. Trim will remove the text from that string that's, uh, that's a blank space on either the beginning or the end. Uh, again, it won't remove it from the original string. It will simply create a new string that is just like the original string, but without spaces on the beginning or the end. Is empty is a, is a good way to see if a string is empty, and that works really well in combination with the trim method. And notice in some cases we can chain together methods as we've done here. So we can say trim it and then is it empty. Trim it and then look for the length. So these are some of the handy methods that we can use when we're using strings. In our next video, we're going to read from a file and we're going to see how we can use this information to parse the file. And then we're going to take that data and we're going to push it into a car object. I look forward to seeing you then.